Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the LDL receptor. Okay, so in this video what we now want to discuss is familial hypercholesterolemia. Okay, right. Uh, so, I'm going to start off with a discussion of the normal blood cholesterol level. Okay, so, and then we'll see uh, what uh, the cholesterol levels within the blood are in these people with familial hypercholesterol. Durolemia. Okay, right. So, familial hypercholesterolemia, often abbreviated just to FH for short. Right, so, the normal blood cholesterol level is around 5 millimolar, which means 5 millimoles per litre. Okay, uh, now that was the old number. It's gradually coming down. It's more around three now is the best apical level to have your uh, blood cholesterol level. Now, what does this mean? This means the actual amount of cholesterol within your blood. This doesn't refer to the number of low-density lipoproteins within your blood. This refers to you've basically taken the blood out, you've homogenized it down, and then you've assayed what is the concentration of uh, cholesterol in there, okay? So, uh, that's what he's meant by this. It's the total concentration of cholesterol molecules rather than the concentration of lipoprotein molecules. Okay, so don't let that confuse you. So this is around the normal version. This used to be considered the normal version, but as I say, it's gradually coming down. Okay, right. So, let's now discuss what happens in familial hypercholesterolemia then. So, in familial hypercholesterolemia, what, you, uh, what occurs is that you get mutations in the genes for the LDL receptor. So once again, just like when we were discussing autosomal recessive hypercholesterolemia, you have two genes for the LDL receptor. So here is one gene, and then here is the other gene, because you have two homologous chromosomes. Okay, so these are your two LDL uh, receptor genes. Okay, now, basically, what's going to happen in familial hypercholesterolemia is that you're going to get mutations in the LDL receptor gene that lead to the loss of function in that LDL receptor that is produced by that LDL receptor gene. Okay, now the mutations that you can get in LDL receptors are classified into five categories. Okay, so let's discuss the different classes of mutations. So class 1 mutations in the LDL receptor result in absolutely uh, no synthesis of that LDL receptor. So you have no detectable synthesis uh, of the LDL receptor if you have a class 1 mutation in the LDL receptor gene. So basically, a class 1 mutation in the LDL receptor gene will result in the complete termination of any synthesis of the protein for that gene. Okay, so you get no synthesis at all of the LDL receptor if you have that gene. Okay, um, so that's a class 1 mutation. Then you have a class 2 mutation. Okay, and in class 2 mutations, you do synthesize LDL receptor from that gene, but uh, it doesn't traffic properly to the membrane. Okay, so there is some flaw in this trafficking process that we looked at here. So you produce it, it gets into the rough endoplasmic reticulum, but then it doesn't end up in the plasma membrane as it should, okay? So you have failure of trafficking of the LDL receptor. Okay, so uh, failure of trafficking is basically uh, what occurs in type 2 um, mutations of the LDL receptor. So failure of trafficking. So, there are then class 3 mutations in the LDL receptor. And in class 3 mutations, what happens is it gets to the membrane. So you synthesize it, it gets into the rough endoplasmic reticulum, it then does traffic to the plasma membrane successfully, but then it can't bind LDL. Okay, so it's pretty useless. There's some problem with the LDL receptor uh, type A repeat domain. Okay, so it can't bind LDL. Okay. Then we have class 4 mutations in the uh, LDL receptor. 
And in class 4 mutations, it is synthesized, it does traffic to the plasma membrane, it does bind LDL, but then when you come to try and endocytose it, okay, so when you try and actually uh, endocytose the LDL receptor with the LDL cargo bound to it, it fails. Okay, so no endocytosis basically is what occurs in class 4 mutations. So pretty much that's like an autosomal recessive hypercholesterolemia where you've got mutations in the uh, LDL receptor adapter protein 1 and you can't endocytose the LDL receptor once it's bound to LDL. But this time it's a fault on the part of the receptor rather than on the adapter protein. Okay, and then finally, there is also class 5 mutations, which are basically where you do produce the receptor, you do traffic it to the plasma membrane, it does bind LDL, it does endocytose, the problem is it then doesn't recycle back to the plasma membrane. So, no recycling. Now, of all the mutations, uh, the class 5 mutations are the least severe. Okay, so basically in class 5 mutations there's going to be a problem with this recycling process that occurs here. You're not going to get the receptors leaving the late endosome and then uh, trafficking back to the plasma membrane, which means that the um, amount of receptors that you actually have on the plasma membrane is going to be nevertheless decreased because you're not recycling them. Okay, right. So, uh, those are the five categories of mutations that you can get in an LDL receptor gene. Okay, now, when we talk about familial hypercholesterolemia, not only is it important to talk about the different classes of mutations that you can get in an individual gene, but it's also important to divide people into two groups. Okay, so there are the heterozygotes, for familial hypercholesterolemia. And in the heterozygotes, all you have is one gene with a mutation that means that it doesn't function anymore. Okay, so you have one loss of function and one that's absolutely fine. Okay, and then you also have the homozygotes, okay, which have two loss of function mutations. Okay, so all of these mutations here will be considered loss of function mutations. They're going to reduce the function of the LDL receptor. We can see that all of the class 1 to class 4s completely remove the function, whereas class 5 is only going to dampen the function. Okay, so that's the least severe of these mutations. And homozygotes, you have, whoops, not two functional ones, that's normal. Uh, in homozygotes, you have two non functional. Uh, genes. Okay, so what does this mean? If you've got one mutation in an LDL receptor gene, so one of these sort of mutations, okay, and then one's perfectly fine, then okay, this one will be working fine. It will be producing LDL receptors which actually function, but this one won't be. So you won't have the right number of LDL receptors on your surface and they won't function properly, basically. So, you're going to be removing less LDL from the blood, and this will lead to elevated levels of LDL. And basically, people who are heterozygotes with familial hypercholesterolemia, generally they have a blood concentration of cholesterol that's around 8 millimolar, so it's only around twice that of what a normal uh, level of blood cholesterol should be, if we view normal now as 4 millimolar rather than 5. Okay, now heterozygotes are actually very common. 1 in 500 people are heterozygotes for familial hypercholesterolemia, and um, they do have these raised levels of blood cholesterol. Okay, right. Now, what actually results due to this? Well, generally, they are okay. They live for generally around um, 40 to 50 years, and then they generally die young because of coronary heart disease, basically, leading to maybe a heart attack or a stroke. Okay, so uh, it's not great, but it's survivable, basically. Okay, whereas homozygotes, if you have two loss of function mutations in the LDL receptor, then you're going to have far too much LDL staying within the blood, and this can lead to uh, blood cholesterol levels of around 18 millimolar. Okay, now homozygotes are much, much rarer. They're around one in a million people. 
okay, and they generally die in childhood, okay, um, so they don't survive that long. Alright, so what are some of the symptoms of having an elevated LDL level for a long period of time? Well, one of the key symptoms is that you get accelerated atherosclerosis, and this is generally what uh, kills uh, people with familial hypercholesterolemia. The accelerated atherosclerosis leads to uh, the production of atherosclerotic plaques within uh, the coronary arteries, which then occludes blood flow to the heart and causes heart attack. Okay, so you get coronary heart disease, and you get it prematurely because members of the normal popu population that have two normal LDL receptors uh, do still get coronary heart disease, but they will generally get it later than people who have got uh, heterozygous or homozygous uh, familial hypercholesterolemia. In addition, some more noticeable uh, symptoms of uh, familial hypercholesterolemia are arcosenalis and also xanthoma. Okay, so let me just explain to you what an arcosenalis is, because this is one that you can actually use to diagnose uh, too high LDL level within the blood. Okay, so basically, if I draw an eye for you, here is an eye, and then of course in the eye you have the iris here, okay, and let's say this person has blue eyes, so the iris is blue here. Okay, so basically, if you have elevated blood cholesterol levels for too long, what can happen is you can get deposits of cholesterol around the edge of the iris, and this produces a sort of grey annulus around the edge of uh, the iris, and this is known as an arcosenalis. So let me show you this. Okay, and you should Google pictures of it if you haven't seen it before, because it is something that, you know, if you look into people's eyes, you can notice whether they have uh, raised blood cholesterol level by looking for an arcosenalis. Okay, and there is quite a famous story of um, doctors um, watching television and diagnosing people with familial hypercholesterolemia uh, by spotting their arcosenalis. Okay, so basically, yellow is the closest colour that I can use, but it's more a sort of milky grey sort of colour than yellow. Okay, and you'll have something that looks like that. So that's what's known as an arcosenalis, this sort of cloudy ring that you have around the iris, and it's where cholesterol has been deposited around the edge of the iris because you've got too high blood cholesterol levels. The other thing to uh, notice is xanthomas. Okay, so anything ending in oma means tumour. Now, xanthomas are not malignant tumours. This isn't cancer, okay? Instead, what they are are these masses of cholesterol that have just been deposited within the skin. So usually they occur around the eye, but they can occur along the arms and pretty much everywhere all over the body. But often you find them on the face around the eyes. Okay, so if we have our eye picture again, okay, so maybe the person will have an arcosenalis, Okay, because they've got the high uh, blood cholesterol levels. And then in the skin surrounding the eye, what you might also see is these little sort of uh, tumours growing on the skin. Well, not necessarily growing, but these tumours on the skin, which are um, made out of deposits of cholesterol that are underneath the skin. Okay, so basically you might have a sort of lump here. And they generally are a sort of reddy orange colour like so, okay, and it's made by this deposit of cholesterol within the skin. Okay, and this is called a xanthoma, so those are some uh, distinguishable symptoms of too high blood cholesterol that you can see, arcosenalis and xanthomas. Okay, but the more dangerous symptom which you can't see is the accelerated atherosclerosis which is occurring within the coronary arteries and elsewhere. Okay, so that's the pathology of familial hypercholesterolemia, that you have loss of function mutations in the receptors for LDL, LDL basically, okay? And you can either be heterozygous for loss of function mutations in the LDL receptor genes, or you can be homozygous. And homozygotes are very, very rare and generally don't die during childhood. 
and heterozygotes are much more common and they generally die prematurely around 40 or 50 um, and they die of coronary heart disease. Okay, and then there are these different classes of mutations that you can have within the LDL receptor uh, gene, which will all lead to the loss of function of that LDL receptor and will lead to it not um, endocytosing the LDL properly and therefore the LDL being left within the blood, elevating blood cholesterol levels. Okay, so that now concludes our discussion of the LDL receptor and familial hypercholesterolemia.